So we're going we're gonna to break out the balance beam, and I'm going to see if I can put my life on the line here just for your entertainment. You can leave that there. You know, the Olympics is coming up in a few weeks here, and I tried out back in 96 and got my butt kicked, so I thought maybe I'd try gymnastics. Wrestling didn't work out so well. So uh, um, I asked for a balance beam, and lo and behold, Rob Cochins just said, hey, I'll build you one. I got that one, and you see that that wasn't very awe-inspiring. Gymnast donated, they donated that for us, and thank you for that. But called up Rob. I said, hey, Rob, could you loan me a couple sawhorses so I could put that on? He goes, uh... No, no, that's not safe. I'll just build you one. So he, uh, he built me one. And Francis Chan had an actual real balance beam on, on, uh, on stage. And he said, our lives are, are kind of, if you look at our, our walk with Christ, that's, it's, it's, it requires faith. And we have to take a step of faith just to get up there. So we get up on the balance beam. Oh, look, someone wrote me a note. It said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel from Everlasting to everlasting, and let the people say, Brooks, don't do it. <laughs> and amen, praise the Lord. Psalm 106, 48. Best of luck, my brother. Love your worried flock. So <laughs> thank you for that. I'm going to take that off there because sure as you say that, I'll step on that and slip and break my neck. Okay, let's put that down here. So here it is. We're, we're, uh, we're up on the, uh, on the balance beam. We've trusted Christ with our lives. And Jesus says, live for me because I died for you. And we're supposed to do that with, with flair. We're supposed to do that with, with boldness. We're supposed to do that like Zacchaeus. We're supposed to do that like the woman who anointed Jesus with the perfume. We're supposed to do that like this widow who gave not just a percentage of what she had, but everything. There's nothing held back. And when we watch the Olympics and we see those little 14, 16-year-old girls flying around, risking life and limb, we're just like, man, that's awesome. How many of you remember 1984? I'm dating myself. Mary Lou Retton, Perfect 10. We're like, yes, USA, USA, Mary Lou Retton. She becomes everybody's hero. Every athlete there, even the wrestlers, even the big hammer throw guys were just huge. They thought the awesome, most awesome person was about this tall, 16 years old. Mary Lou Retton, risking life and limb up on the beam, up on the high bar, or the, uh, the, the uh, uneven bars, you name it. She's just eating it up. And that's what's supposed to be, that's what we're supposed to do for Christ. So, and we have great, we have great intentions. We say, okay, I'm going to live my life for Jesus because he died for me. I'm not going to hold anything back until we get up high. And then we look at, it's like, okay, I was inspired on Sunday morning and, and Pastor Simpson made me cry, but um, I don't know about this. So maybe we, we take a few steps and we think about maybe doing a cartwheel and, and we're supposed to live for Jesus. We're supposed to be generous with our giving. We're supposed to live eternally. We're supposed to live those two inches for the mile. And we're like, ah, what if I fall? What if I give 10% of my income and I can't meet the bills at the end of the month? Let alone, what if I give everything that I have? What if I share my faith with my coworker and I'm rejected and, and our friendship is put in jeopardy? What if I share my faith or I, I, what if I'm rejected? What if they don't like me? What if I'm persecuted? What if I go to Pakistan and, and, they, and, and, I, and I'm beaten for my faith? What if I go to the Middle East? What if, what if, like the bridges, what if I raise my children in the Middle East where the Arab Spring is occurring? Is that, is that safe? Maybe I should run. Maybe I should come back to the States. There's no guarantee we could fall off. Somebody could get hurt. So here's what we do. We think, you know what? I'll just choose a safe routine. I'll choose a, I'll find a nice, a nice job where I don't really have to stand out and no one will know that I'm a Christian. No one will know. And then I'll find a good church with lots of programs and where the pastor's stupid enough to climb up on a beam and he'll entertain me every Sunday and make me laugh. 
Okay, I'll do that. And I'll, I'll send my kids to Christian school or I'll homeschool them. And I'll make them wear helmets. And I'll wrap them in bubble tape. <laughs> okay? And I'll give 2% of my income if I have it at the end of the month after Dish Network and everything. And then <laughs> I'll, I'm not going to share my faith because someone might actually ask me if I'm a Christian. And then I would have to, I would have to stand firm and I'm, ugh, I'm just, I just don't want to fall. I just don't want to fall. And God, God, my biggest prayer of all is, is that I'd be healthy. And please, Lord, can I have the 51-inch screen TV for Christmas? And please, can I have a nice car? And, and, and the air conditioning's not working. I need that fixed, Lord, because it's hot. I sweat on the way to work. And, and Lord Jesus, most of all, when I die, could I die in my sleep so that I don't feel it? Because I don't want it to hurt at all. I just, when I, I just want to, I want to go to sleep and I want to, I want to wake up, Jesus. I just want to wake up with you. I want to, I want to go to sleep one day and the next day just be with you. I don't want, I don't want any risk. <laughs> there you have it. The American Christian dream. No risk and an awesome dismount. Now. What do the judges give that routine? That's pathetic. It's laughable. There's no risk. The difficulty of that, that routine is zero. There's no faith in that routine at all. None whatsoever. And that's, that's what we do. What are you laughing at? Do I got tape on me? My shoe? It's like I went to the bathroom and toilet paper sticking to my foot. See, even doing the balance beam, ref, the, the, uh, balance beam illustration, there's a risk involved. People will laugh at you, not just with you. But was it worth it? Okay, it was worth it, but here's the question. Is that your routine? In all seriousness, and I know that was funny, and, it was, and I thank Francis Chan for a great illustration, and it makes us laugh, but it's also supposed to make us think. Honestly, what does your routine look like? 